In my previous video, I showed you how to make a bog garden, and I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. What I'd like to do in this video is to review some plants that like to be in wet conditions. Now, you don't need a bog garden to grow them. In fact, many of them will grow just fine in regular garden soil, provided you keep it a little wetter than normal. But they do like wet spots, so at the end of the downspout from your house is a great spot for these plants. But even better is a bog garden. So here are some of my favorite plants for those wet areas. A great plant for a bog garden is Joe Pye weed. It's an Ontario native, pretty easy to grow, likes lots of sun, but also likes its feet really wet. Now this picture shows a specific cultivar called Gateway. And Gateway is a little taller and the flower heads are a little bigger. So I think it's a really good choice. But you can go with the native one if you'd like. Very easy to grow, provided you give them enough moisture. They don't really like it if they get too dry. Here's a picture of the flower head. This is another one that does really well. This is the blue cardinal flower. And in fact, it seeds around maybe a little more than I'd like, but it's not too bad and it's fairly easy to pull out. Grows well, loves a moist environment. This bog is full of soil, but there's no standing water. If you go over and touch the soil, it feels moist, but it's, it's not sopping wet. Except right after a rain, it, it has a little more moisture in it. But the excess water runs away through those holes in the bottom. And what you're left with is just really nice, moist soil. So these guys do really well. There's also a native lobelia called Cardinalis, and it has a nice red colored leaves. And I've tried growing that thing, I don't know how many times, and I can't grow it. It never comes back in the spring. I've tried it in drier areas, shady, sunny, moist, bogs, wherever I put it, it does not come back. But when Cardinalis is crossed with the blue lobelia, you get this shade of color, and it comes in different shades of sort of purple, reddish colors. And these seem quite hardy. They come back year after year. So I would recommend you stay away from Cardinalis unless you're just lucky with it or your condition is perfect for it. It does grow in nature around here, so there's got to be an environment that it likes, but it doesn't like my garden. There are lots of ferns, and this is one of my all-time favorites. It's called Miss Sharples. It's a maidenhair fern, and this is one of these ferns that grows really well if it's moist. And then if it's just a bit too dry, it gets smaller and smaller every year. And in fact, this one doesn't grow in a bog, but it grows at the end of the downspout from my garage eave system. And so it gets a fair amount of moisture, it's really shady here, and this garden almost never dries up. So it is growing in a very moist environment, and maidenhair ferns just do really well there. This is another type of maidenhair fern, and uh, it's lovely too. This one actually is growing in that shady bog garden that I had mentioned. Now you have to be careful with ferns. There are ferns for sun and some for shade, and there are some that like to be dry, and there are some that like to be wet. So whenever you get a fern, figure out what conditions it really likes. If you give it that condition, they're easy to grow. This one actually likes to be dry. And you'll find this one in uh, sugar bushes, like sugar maples and so on. So don't put these kind of ferns into your bog garden. So here's an interesting thing. You know, where do you grow hostas? Well, if you go to the nursery and you ask them for a plant that will grow in dry shade, they'll probably try to sell you a hosta. Well, in nature, hostas grow in full sun, but right beside the river. So their feet are in wet soil. Hostas love bog garden. And when they get enough moisture, they can actually take a lot more sun. So the moisture and sun kind of go together. Unfortunately, a lot of people have heard that hostas can take full sun. And so now they're taking their plants and putting them out in the middle of a lawn. And then they forget to water them and they usually look like crap. They only do well in full sun if they get enough moisture. The two go hand in hand. Now, I found this picture on the internet, and it was called the Gentle Giant. I've yet to figure out whether it's the plant or the dog that's the giant. 
Here's one of my favorite plants is a Regersia. There's about five species. Four of them are fairly easy to get. They have fairly large leaves. They're fairly large plants. They make these beautiful white flowers that stay on the plant a long time. There's also some with more reddish colored leaves and red flowers. Some are smaller. You don't have to get one of these really big monster ones, but they all like moisture. The ideal place for them is a bog garden that maybe gets part shade. And this plant grows on the north side of my house. It does get a very small amount of direct sun, but it's mostly shade. And it's an area that stays pretty wet on its own. This guy would do really well in a bog garden. In fact, in a bog garden, they might spread too fast. Siberian iris are great iris. They like to be a little wetter. Now these guys will grow just fine in a regular garden and that's where most of us grow it. But if you can get them into soil that's a little moister, they flower better, they grow a little better and they're really happy there. They don't like to be sitting in water but they do like a bit of moisture. Here's one of my favorite Siberians. It's a little shorter, so this one's only about a foot and a half tall when it's flowering. It's a white, off-white coloration, blooms quite well. Butter and sugar, it's a really nice selection. Here's another one called White Swirl. Nice white color. This one was growing too close to a juniper and wasn't doing well at all. And I moved it a few feet away and it suddenly had 20 blooms on it the next year. And I think the reason was that the juniper has very tight fibrous roots and it sucks all the moisture out of the ground. And it was just too dry sitting right beside the juniper. Once I moved it away, it was able to have its own root system, have less interference from the juniper roots, got more moisture and suddenly it flourished. And it's been doing great ever since. Now there are other kinds of iris that you can get. The Japanese iris, iris and sata are great plants. These guys like to be a little wetter, so a bog would be perfect. In fact, some of these can even take standing water. And I'm now trying them on the edge of my ponds as well as my bog gardens. The Louisiana iris grows in nature in water, so it generally has water around its roots. It certainly loves to have moisture. And this is a fantastic bloom. That flower is as big as my hand. Now it doesn't make a lot of flowers, but it's a really nice one. This one is probably a surprise to you. This is one of the first flowers that will open in spring. It always opens with the snowdrops. This plant here, the Japanese butterbur, is really grown for the leaves. And these things are really large and it's a lovely plant. When people come over for the open house, they head to this plant and so many people say, oh, I want this plant, what is it? I've never seen it before. And well, the sad news is this thing spreads a lot and it will go in two feet in every direction every year. So it needs to be in an area where it's contained, otherwise it, it will get lost. But this guy loves a moist area. In fact, it could probably even be sitting in a bit of water. But certainly a bog area would be great. Ligularias like moisture. They can take a fair amount of sun if their feet are wet. But if the feet aren't wet, this is a shade plant or a part shade plant. And I have it growing in an area here where it's part shade that does get sun in the middle of the day, but has a fair amount of moisture and it's quite happy there. If you like leaves that are a little redder, have a look for Brit Marie. It's a really nice cultivar. There's lots of ligularias around, but I, I think this is probably my favorite one. It's called the Rocket. You can see the leaves are a little different. They're a little more serrated, but it makes these tall spikes of yellow and they slowly open. So what you're seeing here is the bottom part, the petals are fully open, but the top part is still in bud. And over several weeks, this area of bloom slowly moves up this spike. It grows to about four feet tall in bloom. If you want a shorter version, there is a smaller rocket available. Acteas, some of these are Ontario natives. They do like to be wet or at least in a shady area. But again, great choice for bogs. Not many people grow thalictrum and I think gardeners should grow a lot more of these. This is a fabulous plant. This thing is seven to eight feet tall when it's in flower. The buds come out a really nice pink and they sit there for a long time. So you have this display of all these little pink balls on this huge flower head. This flower head is, you know, three feet wide and three feet tall. 
and then slowly they open into these nice flowers. So you get a very long period of bloom on this thing. And there are a number of thalictrums. We have some Ontario natives, which are not quite as showy. They're mostly white flowered, but there are a number of other thalictrums that are fairly easy to get in nurseries. This is Roche Brunianum, which flowers a little earlier. Again, moist, part shade, I'll be really happy. There's a little weird one called Flavum, and this one does seed around a little bit. Uh, I mulch a lot with wood chips, so I don't have too much of a problem with this spreading. Treat it just like the other Thalectrums. The globe flowers are really great. These plants come from high up in the mountains where it's quite cold, but they grow in water. Basically, the snow melt is at their feet. And we find that we take these plants and bring them into our gardens. It's way too warm for them. It's way too dry for them. And they still do well. This plant is not actually in a bog garden. This plant is growing in a regular garden bed. And it does fine. I have other globe flowers growing in bogs and they do fine. And you can get these in different colors. But they're all in sort of the yellow range. So very, very pale yellow to very deep yellow and maybe even a bit of a reddish color. Some of them are four feet tall. And then I have some that bloom at about six inches tall. And there's several in between those. The umbrella plant is also great, and I don't see it very often in gardens. These leaves are dinner plate size or even a little bit bigger than that. It likes to grow wet, and I have it growing in my first bog garden along with the iris, and I have a huge clump of it now. And I moved a couple of the roots last year to my natural pond, and so now they're growing in water. It'll be interesting to see how they do there, because what I really want them to do is something like this. These are actually growing in water, but I'm guessing these are growing in a much warmer climate than we have. And it also blooms early. I grew this one for a while in my bog garden, Nepeta. It's a beautiful plant. It's got these great leaves. Flowers are okay. The problem with it is it did seed around a little too much for me. So I've now taken it out and I moved it out the back into more of a wild area where it has to fight with other things and doesn't spread back there. It's got too much competition. But it is a very interesting plant. And this is a shrub. This is, again is an Ontario native called the button bush. It can grow up to about 10 feet, but it's very easily pruned to much smaller than that. My plant is maybe in the five foot range and I just cut it back if it's too big. It makes these really interesting flowers. Now I've expanded the picture here. These flowers are about an inch across. The ball actually consists of many flowers. So each one of these little florets is an individual flower. And when these guys are out, they're just covered in insects. All kinds of bees and flies, everyone going after the honeydew that's on them. Very few people grow it because it really doesn't do well in a drier garden. So if you put it in regular soil, you can probably do all right with it as long as you water it regularly. But it's sitting in my sunny bog garden and I never do anything to it except prune it back in the spring if it's getting too big. Now that I've got you all excited about growing plants for wet areas, you're probably thinking, I really do need a bog and maybe even a pond to go with it. I'll put links to my videos about building ponds and bog gardens at the end of this video. But you might also be interested in one of my books, Building Natural Ponds. A number of years ago, I wanted to build a pond without electricity, without pumps, no chemicals. Just dig a hole and make a pond. And everybody told me you couldn't do it. So I did it anyways. The pond works great. I don't have any algae problems. I do almost nothing to that pond except fill it up once in a while. And then I was asked to write a book about it. I hope you have a great time in the garden. See you in the next video.